Ah, and we are live today, even even more so because uh, me, John Kelden, and my honoured distinguished guest, Manny Saint Victor, also by his moniker, Manny Cyanide, uh, will today bring you the works. Well, this part of it is for free. There will be premium services, and the premium services will be based on what we're discussing today but shorter, distilled to the point, and actionable within a particular context. Oh, to give you just an example yeah. of what that could be, uh, let's say there's strategies that we have sort of inherited from the last century. Most of them are pretty much useless already, so we are basically providing uh, wayfinding that you can anchor in your own self, in your own situation, in your own environment, in your own ecosystem. So basically, wayfinding uh, that is sort of going one better and and those existing strategies you have that are useless so this is kind of the but this is going to range anything from subscribed services to the tune of a hundred bucks a month to bespoke consultancy which will basically we will take a good look into your wallet and see how much money you've got and you will kind of have to part with a large part of that and we will help you find your way through but is still for most people uh, a 21st century that is still pretty much daunting, bewildering, uh, people basically just retreating into doing mindless silly stuff. Uh, so um, the, the theme for this end is uh, patterns and translations. So without further ado, Mani, the floor is yours. Awesome. Good morning, John. Good morning. Uh, the first thing I want to look at is sometimes I like to put a word or two, and I call them like, well, most seminars call them uh, conceptual markers, lexical markers, because when you're talking to someone, it's important occasionally to throw a word out there that has a very specific collective agreed upon meaning. Um, to extend that further, I I'd like to think of today's session as what in, in the clinic, when someone comes in and they're doing uh, every couple of weeks they're meeting with you, or every week they're meeting with you to tune up their um, default mode network, <laughs> you know, to uh, adjust their thought process such that it is more aware of the reality and less aware of the insanity, uh, we call it collaborative empiricism. Um, and to use the best mathematical example, I'm reading Sync right now because it's delicious. Uh, it's about the concept of how women's menstrual psyche, um, cycles um, link up, how uh, fireflies put together will end up flicking at the same time. Uh, if you watch Waves in Water, it's because particles of water have aligned. Um, that's becoming one with the environment. That's recognizing the pattern enough that you are able to sing happy birthday with me without sounding like cacophony. You know, it's uh, the ability to clap in rhythm such that we're all kind of dancing to the same beat. It's it's pure pleasure to humans. It's, it's beauty. Um, so collaborative empiricism is the concept where someone, um, and initially a stranger, comes into your presence and you get to know each other. You develop a trust relationship, a non-judgmental trust relationship, because in order for people to be themselves, it has to be and for you to perceive them as themselves, which is kind of the second level, it has to be that you're actually listening to the person and not projecting and vomiting your insecurities, your disgust, your need for self-defense into, into the situation. What ends up happening is you end up kind of hollering back and forth across the canyon to use a, you know, I live out in the mountains, so <laughs> um, that metaphor comes in more quickly than, than probably most others. And when if you're going to be like you and I right now, we're hollering across the canyon once a week or so, and we touch base, and our ideas come closer together. We're kind of yeah. integrating us. We're, we're making an inference. If we were two neurons, we would be kind of swapping across the road to each other. Uh, and neurons that fire together, wire together. So if once a week I'm meeting with some people and we're uh, throwing a thought across the canyon, comparing our thoughts, and then going out, spending the rest of the week meeting some other friends and tossing a thought across the void, taking in their thought without judging it, without fearing it as a threat to self, threat to identity, eventually your thoughts start to assimilate, and that's the Piaget term, <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you'll find that your thoughts 
about this here, this now, start to align with other people's thoughts about this here and now. Some people fear that that means becoming something that you're not or giving up your personality. Uh, or some people fear that they might be on the wrong path because they've been led, misled before so many times. In reality, creativity, as we discussed before, is getting to recognize the patterns that millions and millions and millions of our ancestors died finding and solving. Don't be an asshat. There's no new. There is no magic. There is no, um, you know, you're not going to shit a rainbow. But well, yeah, very true. I mean, the, the um, I mean, you, you could say that uh, even if it's sort of becoming gay, including kind of rainbow unicorns, or becoming a leader, so mm -hmm. suddenly everyone is following your Pied Piper tune, or uh, slotting yourself into the trickster archetype, so yeah. you are taking upon yourself to stress test sort of collective patterning and, and, and yeah. questioning whether that is actually anything that is good or not. Mm -hmm. These are, you could say, crude attempts from the point of view of our collective intelligence to sort of come up with sort of uh, sustainable, ongoing, uh, resilient uh, patterns of translation. Now, yeah. the translation is important part of it because uh, as soon as we know how to translate things, let's say I'm with friends and we're having a couple of beer, and typically these friends having beer is kind of me being male and they are also being very male, for an unsuspecting woman would be very kind of obnoxiously so and don't come anywhere near us because we are men drinking beer. Grr. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we have a kind of first line of defense is any kind of woman that we don't want to kind of approach us, we will let up kind of a belch and or a fart and sometimes both, right? So that's a good woman would jump in and harmonize with that, you know. <laughs> that's how I chose my wife. He's like, that's yeah. not impressive. That woman <laughs> is a keeper. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, so this means that there's a lot of translation going on and much of it is kind of doesn't need any words but if I would take sort of the belching, farting communication to having dinner with my uh, with kind of uh, relatives to my wife or kind of distant relatives or distant associates, acquaintances would be business associates. That would not be the optimal way of communicating. I mean, mm -hmm. we could obviously. I mean, you and I create depends on the phase so in the relationship. Like, yeah. You know. I mean, it, it it if it would work, it would actually make for a wonderful start for 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 a startup company, right? If you gather men and female all together, and we could all have a beer and and belch and fart and tell hideous completely politically uncorrect jokes and so on and so forth. We can At Harvard we call that a dinner club. Yeah, <laughs> we could actually fairly quickly bond, right? Yeah. So Skull and now, bones. <laughs> now, now we have sort of basically discovered that what might seem as an affront or as completely making no sense for an outsider makes mm -hmm. perfect sense inside, right? So, but once we have developed a capacity to translate not just abstract entities like words, but translate ourselves mm -hmm. back and forth in between different environments. We, I mean, we don't have the instruments yet, so this is kind of me being out and limb a bit, but fairly strong intelligent guess that then there's already some minute amount of epigenetics happening. Because uh, we do have the response. instruments, right? like the instruments is how you feel when you're around someone. We we keep waiting for science to give us something magically that we spent that the universe has already given us. Yeah. If you're sitting next to someone and you're like, I hate that motherfucker, <laughs> you know, that's that's a sign and a half. If you hate me, I would advise you to not listen to me, and eventually I'm going to show three titties and you're going to be nauseous. Yeah. If you like me, I'll show three titties and you'll be like, oh, why did he show five this time? <laughs> I don't know. That's why he had one with five. It's, yeah, uh, it's, uh, if and you don't if I write, someone get the hell away from them. That's the uh, signal. If, That's if, I, if I write 6,000 blog posts in Google+, which is obviously way too many, 
And if someone That's just the right is, number for me. <laughs> that then is offended by that, my best answer to that is scroll, baby, scroll. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a way to turn me down. You know, I mean, some people need to masturbate with sandpaper to get the right feeling. Okay, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, grade ten. You know, pebbles and all. It's yeah. it's a matter of here's here's the way it really works. Okay, if you like someone, an activity with them is pleasurable, and the best example is sex. Sex is the most disgusting thing involving the exchange of the nastiest fluids. Yeah, semen, sweat spit and if you're into that thing blood <laughs> you know and uh, that's my licorice wet and chains concept it's the exchange of moist wet which is a uh, nasty sounding fluid unless you like the person yeah okay and then you cross the rubicon between um, love making and rape okay if I like you and I want to be there at that time doing that thing with you then my level of pleasant arousal makes it such that we're doing something very pleasurable and we're literally creating. We're creating yeah. in that moment. We're playing. Yeah, and that's fun. also related to our kind of previous end when we talked mm -hmm. about beauty and transformation. That yeah. moment is also beautiful. Yeah. It, it, it won't look beautiful in any shallow, ordinary, traditional sense, but everyone involved will clearly understand and realize and accept that this is a beautiful moment, beautiful experience, and beautiful moments, beautiful experiences are basically our body, our body mind, our body mind, soul, spirit mm -hmm. entity telling us that this is the right place, right time. You're you're in the right place in the right time, and you're on track. Yep. Now, on if you. yeah. Now, on the other end, if you have, and I call this the difference between violence and pain and licorice wet and chains. So. If you are on the outside and you hear me say violence and pain, you're like, they get together a week for violence and pain? That's disgusting. But if you know that violence is spelled V-I-O-L-E-N-S and sans is without and pain is P-A-I-N, is violence and pain, it's violence without pain. It's music. It's beauty. It's resonance. It's yeah. co-creation. It's being yourself. It's letting down your guard. It's knowing that people on the other side of understanding the situation, people who lack the empathy, are going to judge and have something negative to say. And God gave you two middle fingers for a reason. <laughs> you know? yeah, I'll yeah. say, Merla, Mother Merla gave you twin fingers so that you could communicate with people clearly and symmetrically. Um, and, and when you get to the point where, as you're about to throw up your, your two middle fingers, you notice that the other person is also throwing up their two middle fingers at the universe. You guys are in sync. You're buddies now. Yeah. You know? I mean, we can actually back to and, and kind of reweave also kind of from a previous end about archetypes. And then we can uh, weave in Rilke and angels into this. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, the, the very beginning of the Duino elegies, which is pretty much a universally accepted, recognized, one of the best poems and poetic cycles ever written, right? Only from the 1920s. And it starts with Rilke basically uh, longing for some kind of a numinous experience. Because Rilke is Rilke. He's a poet, right? He's, his sort of self-assumed task is to sort of tweak the envelope, to sort of stick his head outside any ordinary normal existence. Is there anything out, outside sort of my own boxes? And lo and behold, he sticks his head out and the angel is there waiting for him and responding to his plea, right? And obviously he basically shits his pants from hearing the angel, right? As, as, as we all That's do, That's what right? you do. When you yeah, it's what we do. do. I mean, if we really meet an angel, we, we, we wet ourselves and shit our pants and, and sometimes both, right? But At the same time, yeah. <laughs> if, we, if we look at the heart, the heart, I mean, you, you, you need to understand that the body does this because this is kind of, this is such an instant transformation, instant realization of beauty, and we have so many patterns that operate on the kind of a slower pace than that, right? So, so it, the body is actually pretty intelligent as bodies go. It's kind of it's made gets, a long way. gets rid of waste matter to sort of speed itself up, right? So it's mm -hmm. kind of a good thing. But the heart does a really wonderful thing. It swoons. Now. What is a swoon 
in a heart. Well, heart rate it, variation. Yeah, <coughs> fractal heart rate variability, right? Yep. So, yep. so it, it sort of kicks into wow, massively, massive optimi instant optimization of the epigenetics. Wow, mm -hmm. good stuff. So mm -hmm. let's kick ourselves into gear. Now, when it's best swoon, to call it love. I mean, when it swoons, most people are at a lack for words. So mm -hmm. actually, you would. What you and I actually could do in, in some of our premium services, we could actually ask people for to slow down in all moments when they have a swoon. Mm -hmm. And Appreciate typically, awe. I'm at a lack for words. Well, don't Shut the fuck up. <laughs> write, write, write it down. Because yeah. normally, when you are not at a lack for words, you basically just spew out let's call it content marketing to be kind mm -hmm. but it's based, yeah mindless claptrap is actually the more correct term but let, let's be fair to marketers because they are kind of their day job is to sort of spew forth mindless claptrap so let's call it content marketing but in all those other moments that actually there is a you shat yourself your heart is in full swoon and there's some sufficient alignment in between newly shat body, newly swooned heart, and uh, some neocortex in some semblance of order, which basically means that what Rilke did was he basically just jotted down not only all the inspiration from a meeting, but also he wrote down what he felt, which is kind mm -hmm. of great. So he said that every angel is the beginning of a terrible beauty. And then he goes on and saying, why is it terrible? Yeah, because when they approach, it's not that they are kind of out to kill us. I mean, one angel is specifically tasked, the angel of death actually is kind of tasked with that's that, right? Job. But, yeah. but that's kind of his job, and we shouldn't basically just question that because if we would go on and living beyond our, we would just be basically begin to smell funny. Now, mm -hmm. there actually are people who are actually beginning to smell funny even before they have actually died, so mm -hmm. that's not that's not a better option. It's better to die before you smell funny. Mm -hmm. Now, but the, all the other angels are tasked differently. And they're basically all tasked with singing. Uh, and that singing is geared towards catalyzing what is beautiful in us. Now, we are kind of uh, ugly angels to sort of simplify enormously, right? And us sort of pointing an ugly stick towards ourselves and saying, uglify as we would be Harry Potter with a wand, then lo and behold, our body-mind responds to our point in this towards herself. Uh, and I mean, I can give you an example. I'm a woman, so my breasts are too large. I'm a woman, my breasts are too small. I'm a woman, my buttocks are too, too large. I'm a woman, my buttocks are too small. I'm this, I'm that, I'm, well, and then there's a gazillion other variations, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a man, I'm not rich enough. I'm a man, I'm so rich, I've turned into a complete asshole, mm -hmm. and so on with variations. So there's so many of these sort of uglifications. So, I mean, from kind of, if we would sort of look at it from an outside perspective, let's say, for instance, from the point of view of the angel hierarchy, we would say that, oh, shit, these, these guys are really liking uglification of themselves, right? To uglify themselves, so that, that, because that is kind of the most popular pastime. Now, obviously for us, us being clever and all, and uh, us able to entertain a kind of a, some kind of a creative thought now and then, we can actually see that, well, okay, so let's turn this into business opportunity mm -hmm. and help people to consider now and then slightly different options than sort of saying, uglify to themselves. Mm -hmm. right? So yeah. what, but th this, there's very little point in trying to, to, to help them understand to begin with. It needs to start with an experience. So yeah. this means that further on in <laughs> further on in the in, in the in the in the poem mm -hmm. he Rilke in the poem he wrestles with things like youth, uh, beauty, death, transformation, experiences, meaning so it basically covers the whole thing, right? But what is interesting is that what is... I mean, people are crap at thinking, so, so we can just sort of skip that part and try and sort of help them understand what Rilke is actually trying to tell us. Yeah, you rather, have to feel it. 
yeah, if we can sort of feel, and this is where most people are actually pretty damn good already, because if you read through some variations thereof, and in this case, the Duino Elegy and your Dystopia and my Social Presence stuff and my Tiha sequences and things like that, they're pretty much in, in a very similar ballpark. They are there, written by us, you, me, Rilke and some others, to help others sort of get into a different groove. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could all actually just sort of sidestep this and go directly to the mother load and listen to Stevie Wonder and the record uh, songs in the key of life. Now, the trouble with that is that people don't realize that that is basically just pure healing. Mm -hmm. So they then sort of see that, wow, th there's this blind black dude playing p p piano and yeah. there's some songs, right? Yeah. And, and then they kind of try to sidestep the whole experience by kind of, oh, I remember my, my dad and my granddad listened to this and it was yeah. quite really pretty cool. go for cool. the easy answer. Uh, and now there's just Justin Bieber and gold. I hate Justin Bieber and, and so on. So they kind of yeah, complete about the Justin thing, Bieber. Right? It's not yeah. about Justin Bieber. It's about, it's about something more introspective and people miss that. Yeah, I, I can give you another example. I, yeah. kind of, w way back in the 90s, I was one of those sort of self-appointed gurus that sort of people like me turned out usually to be. And thankfully, I sort of got out of that gig. Uh, but I talked about ascension, mm -hmm. kind of how to elevate yourself into spiritual being and all yeah. that claptrap that, that, that was popular at the time. And I was kind of much more young and decidedly more stupid. Not saying that I'm kind of significantly more clever now, but, well, experience, you could call yeah. it, chalk, chalk it up to. Now, there was a very interesting uh, question from a woman in the audience when I had sort of finished my kind of missive about ascension, which was basically kind of cleansing your body, cleansing your mind, getting your chakras in tune and all that kind of yada yada, right? And she said, can I bring my dog? And it kind of stopped me <laughs> in my, my, my track, right? <laughs> But you can bring wherever you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's because the, this is what people want, right? Yeah. Uh, they they would dearly love ascension or new sphere activation or happiness as as or their success or any which kind of side guys the equivalent there is right now, right? Uh, we could say, here's the... I'm, you and I, we could actually capture this on tape now, so we can sort of kill this kind of pseudo airsets kind of line of businesses right now. And I don't care if this is the disruptive of most of the media industry. So the media industry is predicated on this. Here's the top three tips for instant social media, personal and business success. And by the way, you can bring your dog and your cat and your Dior handbag. Mm -hmm. And your Manolo Blahnik shoes. Yeah, it's all set. Now, doesn't matter. Even if I sort of preface this with kind of thick sarcasm, irony. This mm -hmm. was not the pitch. Chances are, still people would say that part of what you said about the Manolo Blahnik and and can I have one of those services yeah. packages? Thank you. Yeah. And how much do you want? May cause stomach bleeding and wallet exsanguination. Is, is what they usually say over the pretty music and the lady running through the fields and all the pharmaceutical ads. Yeah. It may cause death. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, 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 uh, instead, what we actually can offer, which is, uh, so if we can't sort of make the kind of the, the, the stupefy pitch, because that is just basically just a body, mind, soul, spirit fuck, I mean, I'm all for procreation, right? But people should, beautiful. <laughs> people, <laughs> people should be able to choose when to engage in procreation and exchange precious bodily fluids, mm -hmm. and they should be able to spawn beautiful critters, right? Ideas with great legs, or, or children grow up to be more or less reasonably human, and so on. So and, and, and they should be tweet, sustainable right? and generate revenue. You shouldn't be. There's a thin line between a hobby and a sustainable entity. Yeah, you know, a sustainable yeah. business. And a lot of times, people because they enjoy something, they assume they shouldn't get paid for it. Yeah, I, I happen to enjoy listening to psychotic people. And it's not some weird voyeuristic um, 
you know, it's, it's uh, when you develop a certain level of empathy where you're able to listen to the person without hearing all of your noise in your head, you can reach out and be like, okay, listen, let's start by breathing. Let's start by next yeah. time you're in this situation, remembering that you should breathe, and then taking the next step. Well, what's the next step? Don't do, don't vomit your reflexes onto the situation. Yeah. And then, you know, you tell them that, you're like, okay, go do that, and I'll see you in a week. And they're like, well, what else should I do? Go do that all day, every time that you remember to do it, and I will see you in a week. Yeah, yeah. You know, breathing changes your, your carbon dioxide, which change carbon dioxide, if you think of it as acid, uh, changes the pH of your um, system. That's why you hyperventilate when you're panicking. You're trying to readjust that shit epigenetically. Your breathing is changing the conformation of your DNA. It's changing your state of your body. It's changing your high-frequency heart rate variation. It's making you resilient. So spend a week breathing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And also the... Um uh, the breathing is, uh, let, let's call it a, a, a cycle for now, mm -hmm. to just sort of make it very simple. Uh, so by adjusting the, the quality, the depth, and, and, and the frequency, the velocity, if you will, You're of, changing of, the oscillation. Of, of the, yeah, you can re-attune, realign yourself. Now, uh, there's... Another vector I would like to introduce in the kind of reattuning, realigning, because those are two uh, metaphors. They are really great, but I would like to sort of add a third dimension to it, and it's a retranslation. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to actually get what I mean by that, let's imagine a human being, a four-dimensional human being. Mm -hmm. So, this Space human and time. This human being, let's say this human being doesn't sort of move around all that much, just a little bit. So you can sort of basically kind of have a kind of more or less fixed focus camera kind of bird's eye view on this human. You would still see in the four dimensional space that this human is born, seems to sort of grow in, in size after age 20, stays more or less recently the same size. Uh, as men tend sort of to bulge in the middle a bit, kind of later on. And then you sort of see ongoing uh, setting decrepitude, and then all the molecules we, go their separate ways. <laughs> yeah, and then then we we, we die, right? And then yeah. there's kind of there is no bond. So there's there's a series of translations, and some of them are more clearly visible, and some of them are not. But every one of these translations, I mean, if you look at the kind of internal organs, mm -hmm. I mean the liver. If you kind of take my liver right now and my my liver, my own liver, this the same liver, which is not the same because it's, the cells has regenerated in mm -hmm. fairly quickly, right? So there's yeah. there's a, there's a new thing happening. Obviously, if you see it from the outside, you don't see that. But I mean, now we have a clever little tool called science. We can actually just look kind of look at these things even inside. Without killing so, you. Yeah, and this is where. Obviously, there is a pattern and a kind of resilient, sustainable, more or less homeostatic pattern. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm for one, I'm very glad that I'm having kind of spirit having a bodily experience, and my liver stays pretty much the same, right? Mm -hmm. It's very, it's, it's very good when mm, I've sort of been stupid and put put toxins in, inside myself, right? And then I, I call it college. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I need to uh, rely on my liver to sort of get rid of of most of that gunk, right? Now, but that's the patterning part. The translation part is that it regenerates itself. Mm -hmm. So a couple of months, a couple of years from now, there's a new liver. Yep, yep. And it taking it even further, um, even after my molecules have gone their separate way, the, uh, each one gone a separate way, you can look around and see either patterns of behavior that I've left behind in a child that I've raised, yeah. patterns of information and patterns of my intent when I was present that I've left behind as pieces of writing, as a corporation that I hand down to my family, as a piece of artwork that hangs, you know, as a car or a garden that I kept that my kids and my grandkids would hang out with that have my memory. Yeah, yeah there's, There yeah. are patterns of neuronal firing that you leave behind 
that when someone looks in Dimension 4, like through the time continuum, they see Manny was here. Look, poison. You know? Yeah. Um, and that's, that's, that's your immortality. That's your goal. That's, that's the mark. And then if you look down two generations and you see that, you know, people will be like, oh, he looks just like his grandpa. And guess what? He has a liver just like his grandpa. That was because grandpa, in the midst of all the partying and whatever, managed to take some time to put enough energy into the universe to create someone with someone that created someone else with someone that has a bit of his essence in there. That's yeah. that's yeah. your translation along the, the line of the time axis. Yeah. Let, let's see if we can, can weave this into some kind of a uh, uh, theory. Uh, uh, so we have established patterns. We have established mm -hmm. translations. Applying this to a seemingly external context, mm -hmm. we have basically have wayfinding. And wayfinding is basically strategies from getting from A to B, but as everyone knows, in reality, from A to B, it's not kind of just a neat map. There's this kind of obnoxious thing called reality also. Mm -hmm. it has kind of you, need to, you need to do map update. You can't, you can't always get in a straight line. Um, you have to adapt to the landscape, and then suddenly there's a pit stop because you need to refuel your vehicle or yourself or your fellow travelers or something, right? Or there's a nice scenic detour, uh, and you'll be all the richer for having taken the detour, even if it's from a strict rational perspective. That was kind of almost sort of beside the objective point, right? Now, so uh, for people who are doing strategies, they are keen of making a point, which mm -hmm. leads them into argument and debate and discussing. Discussing is basically kind of shake apart, and debating is basically beating down. Now, mm -hmm. this means that um, for monkeys and Neanderthals, debating and beating down and jumping up and down and sort of establishing who is the, the alpha male, that is a fairly reasonable behavior. But that was in a scarcity-based environment. Who know more or less, at least in our kind of own sort of private world, that uh, I mean, my coffee sort of grown a bit lukewarm right now, right? So you sort of rush straight out right in the middle of this recorded hangout and get me a new cup. No, I can adapt and adjust, and I will sort of refuel my sort of cafe after this hangout because I'm yeah. pretty much reasonably caffeinated, in kind of to 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 spew forth English words right now. No, so this is kind of making a point is fine making a line which then consists of a couple of gazillion points sort of mm -hmm. more, more or less sort of ducks in a row is yeah. better so this is basically the explanation of, of so first patterning and then you go into wayfinding basically applying your sort of select patternings mm -hmm. now once you do wayfinding you're kind of moving to from a to b so you're kind of somewhere in the middle in the muddle stuff happening some things you can sort of make make sense of something you can't make sense of I um, love the concept of middle and muddle yeah. together. It, it, I, I mean, it, it's how it is, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, if everyone would just sort of listen to us and do exactly what we tell them to do, everything would work out great, right? Actually, it, I mean, I, 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 <laughs> it I'm tends just... to work in my I, hospital. I, I, I'm not only kidding, right? And this is kind yeah. of where people would say, fuck, I will make it a special case not ever listening to these two guys because they are arrogant and condescending bosses. If you don't what? like the sound of my nuts clicking against each yeah. other, get the hell out of my range because they click like heavy. Yeah. We <laughs> are bastards, check. Yeah. <laughs> Covered. We are self-absorbed assholes, check. Hey, where, yeah. where else do you want me to be absorbed? <laughs> I will aim in that direction and it will absorb what I'm putting out, trust me. Yeah. You know, I will golden and, and, rain right into where you want it. And, and then I will basically say, don't cry, research <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then we kind of come across as even more condescending, right? Yeah. But anyway, the, the sense making is obviously complex, right? So mm -hmm. my guess then would be if you don't want to listen to us, roll your own, right? Roll your own sense making. Yeah. Uh, and and in, if if you have really crap patterns and you've made ma made some pretty horrendous choices out of those patterns, because if the patterns are crap, no one else would want them, right? Uh, so then means that your wayfinding is full of suffering 
and your sense making is pretty much substandard. So it kind of follows yeah. on, right? So the patterning is important. Yeah. This means yeah. that, 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 that the, the beauty, I mean, let's say kind of love beauty intelligence as some kind of a substrate for patterning. Yeah. And Let me give you a, a thing yeah. for a seed for the pattern. Yeah. Uh, when I was at Harvard, I was taking an uh, organic chemistry class. And up until then, up until Orgo, I thought I was the brightest star in the galaxy. Yeah. Uh, and so I got to Orgo, and I was like, oh, shit, I'll do this class like I do every other class. I'll glance at the notes, and I'll go in and take the test. So I went and take the test. I get back my paper, and on the first que question, and tests at Harvard had this weird habit of being out of 427. That test was out of 427 points. So it wasn't 100. It was The professor was like, if you can't understand that, then good luck with life. Um, so question number zero, oh, well, question number one had 120-something points. And he wrote on there zero out of 120 something, and in big letter, big red letters, GCE. And so I go down there, ego intact, because you know I'm smart. <laughs> and I'm like, what's GCE? He's like, that is gross conceptual error. And I'm like, oh asshole, what the hell's gross conceptual error? And by then he was in his zone. You know, he was like, okay, this little motherfucker needs to be realigned bluntly. Yeah. He said, "He said you started off on the wrong premise. From there, you took off with great speed and confidence in the wrong direction." Yeah. So, one of the things that happens to people a lot is they start off somewhere, they argue from there, they're way the fuck wrong, and they don't want to even adjust slightly, and. Yeah. You, you have to go through some sort of alignment with the reality. For the longest time on our planet, there were people in ivory towers with information that they kept from everyone else. Yeah. The people who got to that information ran shit. We are at a time right now where that information is getting out. When you meet someone who is providing you with information that they got from somewhere that you weren't allowed to be, you know, and usually people were kept out of these places with $40,000 tuitions and one in a thousand getting in or whatever. There were games that were played. And they're still being played, I'm sorry. But yeah, yeah. every once in a while, when the information leaks out, what you'll find is that you and your ego don't get to decide what science is. You and your self-esteem don't get to decide what actually works. If your business is not working, if what you're doing with your health is not working, in the end, when you die early, you can argue all you want that your way was working. You're dead. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you're insane, you are insane. Yeah. And you might have had some luck with your insanity, but at the end of the day, like with me, a lot of times people get upset because I'm somewhat impatient with the way I approach things. Oh, you're you're sharing too much information, etc. Uh, I'm doing what after following people who, shit, who have done well enough to turn around and teach people at Harvard or teach people in a hospital who have found ways of testing the environment and helping other people out of their insanity. This is what I spent 30 years of my life training. So if yeah. we're on a one-to-one -one and you want to argue with me about some things that I suggest that you do, well, yeah, you, you can do that. I'm, I'm, I'm still getting 500 bucks at the end of the session from your ass, you know, yeah. and that's yeah. if, I'm on a, if I'm budgeting for you, you know. This, this is probably the... The, the, the pivotal realization of our, our all of our kind of sense. So, so yeah. I mean, maybe we shouldn't sort of even say this. We should sort of say, uh, at this moment, this is where you will notice your net money going silent, and pre feel free to subscribe to our premium services. But, yeah. I mean, since you and I are also really kind of decent people, uh, here's part of the premium package, right? Uh, yeah, this is the, cognitive restructuring. That's what we call it in a box. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean... <laughs> Uh, most people understand there's such a thing as data. I mean, mm -hmm. when, if you want to sort of build a road, uh, uh, an automobile, a uh, Google Plus uh, digital platform, there needs to be some data, some ones and zeros, or, or some equivalences kind of whipped into shape, right? Mm -hmm. the, the very thing that we are translating back and forth in between two actual physical people. I mean, I'm guessing that you're an actual physical human being at the other end of this digital thing, right? So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's say for the sake of argument that we exist, so we can sort of just 
get rid of the whole philosophical trap 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 for now I'm used to interest in data and it's pretty important also that these ones and zeros are also designed in a way so it sort of provides information both for you and me to actually kind of know how to press when to start this hangout and other stuff right adjust our volume and things now here's where most people's sort of sense making stops and here's where the premium thing can make a significant difference because you and I know and this whole missive and large chunks of all our previous sense have been about let's look at data and information as it's if two circles and it's a Venn diagram and it's an overlap mm -hmm. and then we can basically sort of pretty much sum up that in between the overlapping between data and information there's semiosis yeah. and this semiosis is uh, pretty much similar for someone who is more or less ordinarily sane kind of what I would call kind of well okay then and then <coughs> there's those who are insane there's yeah. kind of further below those who are sort of criminally insane and they will sort of need to be tucked away somewhere because they would harm themselves and others and then and there's basement the dystopia where we make cherry cook rain yeah some, of, some <laughs> people who are kind of vibrantly sane right mm -hmm. People who just you, you want you want we'll to hang, you want to hang with artists, poets, uh, scientists. scientists, doctors, uh, <laughs> the game designers, um, uh, sense maker experts, any which kind, right? And if you stick around with those guys, you can sort of notice that your EQ is going up, your IQ is going up, your AQ, your SQ, or whatever else Q you want to sort of measure. Uh, and it's just a, a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we could almost say if we would have a kind of trademark parts of the products we're going to sell, uh, I'm kind of a half a mind of actually kind of calling them a good thing and then just a trademark sign afterward, right? <laughs> yeah. Or maybe here's a good thing, right? Yeah. So, you're kind of just telling them kind of in the simplest forms that and these things are semiosis. It's just yeah. that the semiosis isn't kind of it's not static, right? So yeah. things are not things. And this is where it helps. The processes. Yeah. If you want to sort of hold on for a thing for a while, right? I mean this laptop I've been around for kind of now a kind of couple of years and I'm very thankful for it. It's also still kind of manages to crank out these video conferences and lots of other stuff a good thing right yeah. but it's if it would just be a thing something static if there wouldn't be some user interfaces user experiences processes uh, transactions translations uh, then it would be useless right paperweight so, so I mean th this is goes all the way back to Tao where uh, Lao Tse basically said about kind of the, the usefulness of a coffee cup. He actually didn't say coffee cup, but let's say call it a coffee cup for now. It's the emptiness, right? Mm -hmm. So the emptiness, the sort of the non thinginess of the thing is what enables you to pour coffee in it and then it's useful, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this is something that can be extended to all other things. Yeah. It's the and relationship that they create with their constraints. Yeah, I mean, even uh, I mean, this might be kind of a terrible leap for most people, but if you go by data and information, that those will sort of keep us grounded, right? And also all our would-be clients. Kind of remember, that's kind of the starting point. We have data. Uh, the good thing with data is you don't get to have opinions about data. So this is kind of a thing that sort of in, its, in itself is a blessing, right? I yeah. mean, there's, there's such a thing as, as science, yeah. and obviously... It's it's a wonderful thing with opinions, and me, I'm a gas peg, I'm full of opinions, and ask me anything and I will answer, and it will be correct, right? Because it's kind of what I think. And if these patterns that are then sort of built, hopefully on sort of some solid ground called data, if that is providing any kind of meaningful translation, meaningful patterning, that is information. So data and information together, it's a pretty neat package. Right? But uh, 
if then people go all static on the poor data and information, mm -hmm. they will invariably turn all the wonderful possible patterns and patternings in between data and information into things, mm -hmm. into objects. Now, let me give you kind of a very kind of clear example, kind of my wife. She's obviously kind of an immovable object, right? Uh, and if I would ever kind of wanted to nudge her in any which other direction then then she doesn't want to go, that's a lost course, right? And I should sort of give up already. And I should sort of fall into kind of the most clever husband heuristic there is, kind of and yeah. saying just yes, dear. <laughs> and 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 accept the fact that I'm always stupid and wrong. And if I accept that I, do, I, I can at least avoid the fate of being stupid and dead, or kind yeah. of stupid and kind of pummeled, or stupid on and the kind of <laughs> yeah. on the couch, yeah, and it, or out in the shed, or kind of other derivatives, right? Yeah. But if I remember that she is not a thing, she is not an object. This is this is a leap of imagination for most people because we invoke. A kind of an anxiety provoking repatterning. Mm -hmm. Th this sort of collaborative em empiricism, this collaborative yeah. sense making, that, that's kind of this sense is basically all about, right? Uh, you could say that the deliverable of an optimal and an in itself optimizing patterning and translation is collaborative empiricism. Mm -hmm. So they kind of basically just sort of simplify for people who just want screw all those nice words, get to the point already, and then yeah. there it was, right? Collaborative so, empiricism. Uh, yeah. So if you want to have the deliverable, it's co collaborative empiricism, to basically kind of sit down with yourself as a thing and rediscover that you're a living process, mm -hmm. sit down with your significant others and discover that they are not sort of immovable objects that you can sort of project your weird shit and bad shit upon, but they are kind of living processes. You can actually sit down kind of under a tree like Buddha did, right? And then you can sort of discover life, universe, and everything just by sitting down under a tree and you sort of let go of your projections. I mean, actually, when he sees those demons that comes and kind of wants to kill him, I, I think in the kind of original version, it's kind of that they turn into flowers or something, right? So all the demons that are kind of... Because it's kind of all in the mind, right? Yeah. Uh, now, it's... It's actually not all in the mind. This is kind of where uh, it's kind of close but no cigar, right? When you say it's all in the mind. It's all in the semiosis. Mm -hmm. It's all the interface. Yeah, because, I mean, if I want to go straight through this wall in my apartment, well, good luck with that, right? Can you get that YouTube ready? I can, I can, I can <laughs> make some bank off of this. <laughs> get a running start, John. It helps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, you, if you put your head down too, and, and you get but the arms going, maybe actually our kind of five-minute videos. Here's for our would-be clients out there, viewers. Uh, maybe these five-minute videos will be sporting me and Manny bashing our head into the Against nearest the wall. wall, right? Mm -hmm. With with running commentary, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. all of those will be themed. Here's not what to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Advanced stupid <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, stupid shit uh, version three hundred and seventeen. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but I mean, obviously, there's a there's a there's a disadvantage with that, and it, it's that kind of Monty Python already did that kind of to yep. perfection, right? Yep. Uh, now, one thing is that when people start to understand that it doesn't. The reality is there, and this is kind of underlining, underscoring what you just said earlier. The reality is there, and the interpretation is indeed all in your mind. How about you bring the two closer together? The nature of symbiosis yeah. Yeah. is that you get a firing in your brain, and you sit with that firing. You don't take off and react to it immediately, unless it's threat of death. I mean, back in the day, there were cavemen and there were bears. There were bears. There were saber tooth whatevers, and we were delicious. You know, yeah. so you had to eat it, kill it, fuck it as quickly as you could, <laughs> because the competition was ridiculous. The scarcity. Nowadays, the winner is the person who is able to mindfully wait and sit with the signal and watch what emerges from the signal. If yeah. the signal is like, what was that? Name that tune. 
where they would play the song for you, and as soon as you recognized the song, you would answer. You would like ring your bell or whatever and answer. I think Jeopardy works the same way. But yeah. if you'll notice, the people that win are the ones that answer when they recognize. That means you've accumulated enough information without, you know, spraying your shooting your wad that you are actually reacting to the right stimulus. There's a pattern, you know. If um, I'm trying to think of some good simple examples, actually, a I have lot a of brilliant songs sound the same. Brilliant example of 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 this kind of. I mean, obviously, for most people, it's it's difficult to find great questions. Right? I, I saw the other day YouTube, where there's a woman, and the task for the four people in 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 the panel is to sort of guess her profession. Mm -hmm. I mean, we in, we in the audience saw it because it sort of flashed right from the start when she comes in, beautiful young blonde woman from Florida, Miami. Stripper. Sorry. Uh, she's I was guessing already. She, <laughs> close. Uh, she's a professional wrestler. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so close, but no cigar. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there but was anyway, a cigar in the one, version I was one, thinking, John. There was a cigar. <laughs> one of the four. One of the four people in the panel happens to be Groucho Marx. So that's the kind of the twist to the story, right? So <laughs> cigar. He he's ex <laughs> expertly. He's really good at sort of throwing in the monkey wrench. So to the result that the others are kind of laughing so hard so they can't almost come up with good questions because yeah. I mean at some point further into the kind of because they just have 15 questions right and mm -hmm. if if she replies yes then they can continue and if she no this kind of talking up one point to her and then the next one uh, and somewhere in that uh, questioning Rauch sort of thinks sort of out loud for himself uh, Although it's audible in the video, that hmm, I'm not sure if actually just being a blonde is a profession. Uh, but actually, I have known a few that managed to pull that off. <laughs> Tis true. Tis true. <laughs> yeah. So this means that uh, if someone's semiosis, biosemiosis in this case, very close, uh, is I will be kind of a blonde, young, uh, big boobed professional wrestler. In, mm -hmm. in, uh, so this is kind of where basically being blonde is a really, really great it's, it's uh, part of the semiosis, <laughs> right? In between the data and information. What's yeah. the available data? Well, you just need to sort of take <laughs> hip and boob measures, right? So then yeah. you, there, there's your data, a baby. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. the information is kind of can I kind of engage in some kind of gainful kind of employment that I can just sort of be myself Blonde hair, boobs, and all. Uh, I mean, obviously, they should need to learn some wrestling, right? But I mean, let's face it, that's not why we are here watching and, and paying yeah. the entrance fee, right? We yeah. are here to see some boobs attached to the blonde, right? Yeah, and if, 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 if it's wrestling kind of double trouble, kind of, I, I'll pay twice the, 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 the ticket, right? Yeah. I, I'll bring my friends. Now, yeah. now uh, I, I have a piece that goes in here because I want to yeah. take someone to Storbeck for a bit. Yeah. Um, there's um, there's a verse that I've I've got in in the whips and chains and well actually the name of the song is fucking beautiful and I'm still working on it probably take me a year to finish but in in the song I, I decided to call it fucking beautiful because um, one of the lines is insanity she said to me is pleasure come inside and see um, uh, and then second part is inside of me she whispered to me is pure pain. And she says, I wish I wasn't so fucking beautiful. It's driving me insane. And people are like, well, why would you put those words together? One of the things that you'll see a lot when you're dealing with psych patients is, um, and actually with people on their way to being a psych patient, is extreme beauty, uh, a lot of times the, the projection that people make is disgust. If, if it's not theirs, they go into jealousy and then they're disgusted. If you're so beautiful that yeah, you're out of their yeah. range, it's disgusting. Yeah. But yeah. The beauty causes a, a trick, it triggers a response of um, assumptions. You know, when you, when you have a blonde with large breasts, um, you instantly, you disqualify that person from the opportunities to, uh, the opportunity to be various other things. Yeah. I and mean, you, you have, th this is why, this is why people actually should pay us for our sort of premium services because the default semiosis in between data and information mm -hmm. they are they are crap let me just give you two yeah. examples 
uh, driving while black. Mm -hmm. That's a yeah. default collective semiosis in between data and information. Especially in a gated neighborhood. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it actually is kind of much kinder to basically just kill all the blacks, right? Because that is yeah. actually kind of more in, 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 in consequence with what people think. Uh, yeah. And, and, and very, the problem. And to, to sort of get, sort of try to showcase to people what I'm on about here, because mm -hmm. I'm not sort of interested in, in that particular, just that part of, of the debate, but rather the patterning. Mm -hmm. And then driving while black is almost a similar pattern that operating delicate machinery while blonde. Yes, yes. So it's the same pattern, right? And um, uh, speaking out in social media while introvert. Yes. Uh, holding your ground in a debate while woman. Yes. Um, I mean, and it's just... Hopefully, yeah, the by just by those few examples, people would be able to sort of formulate these patterns for themselves. Such yeah, and there's such a cognitive such dissonance there that makes people yeah. ready. They want their closure. They yeah. want at some point for you to do something black, to do something yeah. blonde, to do something uh, you know introverted. They they yet as soon as you do it, the cacophony in their head, they're like ah, yeah, get back in your box. Yeah, and also if we want to sort of extend it and, and deepen it a bit, you, I could say uh, expecting great outcomes while holding on to old obsolete uh, metaphors. Yes. Yes. So this is kind of where, uh, if and, and this, um, maybe I would, if I would repeat that a couple of million times, it would actually register, right? Because this is kind of the, uh, the trim tab. That people can actually use, if, if if then, but possibly people need to have a bit of a swoon, a bit of the sort of ecstasy, epiphany kind of insight, mm -hmm. something going on, right? Yeah. Or in that, some pain, frustration, um, friction, uh, despair, disgust. I mean, a any of those works brilliantly as fertile soil. Soil. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that was kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Jungian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, Hofstadter would have would have would have had some fun with that. And surfaces and essences. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I mean, I'm glad you said surfaces and essences because I mean, the surface is obviously needed. I mean, I went on to say that this translation from from from. Uh, uh, semiosis, fashioning, to wayfinding, to sense making, and then kind of a brief pit stop at available data. Mm -hmm. What's next? Well, if you understand both surfaces, I mean, mm -hmm. so your vehicle is kind of more or less in touch with sort of the, the underlying road, the path, right? Yeah. And the essences could be the kind of the fuel that sort of you put in the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Could be the food that you put in your. Especially body. in French, essence is is fueling. Yeah, there. I mean, uh, 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 <laughs> the, the 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 essence is once the data you have sort of consumed mm -hmm. in the previous kind of part, uh, the pit stop, the the lunch break, the coffee break, the the social curation, social media, whatnot, some kind of data sort of entered the stream, right? This is then augmentation. Mm -hmm. You could say that what's the deliverable out of combining some surfaces with some essences? Well, it's augmentation. Mm -hmm. yep. So this is kind of the the um, the fee for staying alive on the planet, having a physical body. Gaia and the rest of the universe wants yeah. us to consume some data, mm -hmm. and and the universe is kind of free for all kind of. It doesn't really much care what data we consume. As long as we consume some kind of data, right? Now and react appropriately. But, but what to do with it? Well, mm -hmm. we need to augment it. Yeah. And preferably, if we want to succeed, if we want to be happy, if we want to pursue eudaimonia or serendipity or God knows what else kind of floats our boat, we need to augment the data. We need to sort of transform it somehow. Now Instead of sort of getting stuck here because people don't really understand what augmentation even is, so then I can sort of get kind of the shortcut. Uh, how do you know if you have sort of consumed data and you have turned it into something kind of significantly better and different? Well, do you feel good? You, 
you feel good. You, you can and, feel it come out before you flushed. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or in a put abstractly, you will be endowed with agency. Yes. Yeah. There it is. So this is a very very kind of uh, simple way to to see at least after the fact. Did I do my augmentation right? Did I consume some data and did I sort of succeed in transformity into something else? Okay. Yes. If you if you now and then have a glimmer, a spark of agency, you did it kind of good enough. Now the agency then we are sort of coming full circle spiral back to information. Mm -hmm. Because the agency then makes a dent in the universe somehow. Otherwise it's not agency. So the deliverable of agency is information, but not information in the old Shannon way. Uh, because that is kind of... Um, That's just a raw signal versus noise. Yeah, I mean, so. we should almost need kind of a three-hour kind of thing to deconstruct Shannon and his notions of information, right? Because it's kind mm -hmm. of so many... Uh, I mean, God rest his soul, he wanted to do sort of pin down what information is once and for all, 1948, and there it did, right? And yeah. uh, But that needs to be challenged because yeah. I think it all, means all these kind of semiosis, patterning, wayfinding, sense making, data, augmentation, agency, information yeah. are all John. information. But if I sort of say that everything is information, then it's kind of pretty useless, right? Yeah, but there's. Uh, Tononi takes it to um, consciousness as information integration. Um, a camera has all the pixels and everything in it from capturing the world outside, but so what? You know? Yeah, yeah. Whereas I look at the picture and it has meaning. It evokes, hey, that's the bench where my mom sat right before she left last week or whatever. Yeah. That's you integrate it, you create a meaning. Uh, if you're looking at event related potentials in a human brain measuring, you know, thought process, uh, you get your N four hundred. Like Shakespeare yeah, was good yeah. at evoking an N four hundred. It's like, oh, what the? I've never seen that before. Something novel, something that you have to make some attribution for. It has yeah. to, yeah, you know, somatic marker to use Damasio's approach. Yeah, I mean, also kind of a, a, a pitch for us and and some of our, our premium services. You could actually use that sort of camera lens as 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 a very kind of good. So we don't want to mess with sort of the camera body or mm -hmm. the 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 client body. Whether it's mm -hmm. the actual physical body or their mind or their body of work or their kind of series of products or their body work in terms of a website or anything, right? So, so we don't mess with that. But mm -mm. we want to look at the lens and particularly, so if they have just one lens in front of a filter in front of their lens and they have smeared it with poo. Yeah. So they come to us and say, everything looks slightly. Shitty. Shitty. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's it's it's, uh, and they're depressed. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of, they, they come to us. Kind of, why, why is the world always fifty shades of brown? <laughs> <laughs> I think I just wet myself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's surprisingly common, right? Yeah, People it's not rose-colored you. glasses. <laughs> it's it's a mean, different hue. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if they then shift from fifty shades of, of brown yeah. to fifty shades of grey. Yeah. It's not an improvement. Not, not. I mean, sometimes it is, but not always. <laughs> it's not a panacea. Yeah. And if they shift and they sort of try to be gay and marry, so to speak, and then shift into Fifty Shades of Pink, that's and not rainbow. always an yeah. improvement either, right? Yeah. So, but and having Fifty Shades of Aware that there's something on your lens and being empowered to wipe it off. Yeah, I mean, this is where I mean, you could say that in the intersection, we could go Venn diagram here as well and look at agency and information as Venn diagram. And what happens in the overlap? That is basically these all these sort of perceptual conceptual filters, right? Mm -hmm. So if we help people uh, shift and have a kind of a larger set of filters, I mean, mm -hmm. in some cases, I mean, this goes back to what I started with. But when 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 we do the kind of belching farting thing with all males and, and too much beer, yeah, that's one frame. Yeah, I mean, Fifty Shades of Beer is the perfect lens for that occasion, right? Because Context. it's uh, kind of yes. what it is, right? Yeah. Uh, but if we then go to sort of kind of a very kind of with fine bone china b b b coffee party with elderly women and go belching and farting, well. It, it obviously fun and later on uh, after we've sort of broken all the china and sort of having been kind of thrown out from party. But yeah. it, it's it's not it's not the optimal filter, right? So yeah. 
So, yeah. so and, and John, there's another layer to that filter. Yeah. If if you have known those, if you're one of those uh, sophisticated old women and you've known each other since you guys were playing tea house um, 50, 60 years ago, 70 years ago, yeah. then you can do that. Yeah. You have to know who you are in that context, like in the exactly. driving while black example or the, um, you know, outsmarting people while blonde example. Yeah. Um, and I mean, even, even old ladies can mm -hmm. obviously do the default kind of collectively agreed pattern because it's kind of old ladies and fine world China and, and stuff, right? And, and, and that is fine. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, is I can give you kind of a wonderful story. This was this uh, very, very popular Swedish children's books author, Astrid Lindgren. She's kind of everyone knows in Sweden who she is, right? And she's the people long stocking and, and lots of things. Now, uh, when she turned 90, she only had two lady friends left because basically everyone else had died, right, from old age. So they had coffee parties, and the start for each coffee conversation was invariably this. Death, 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 they said loudly to each other for the first minute. Now, why? Well, Astrid Lindgren gave the explanation. That way we have had the death conversation and we can go on talk about other things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's just kind of a wonderful way of describing that obviously they basically could have just stuck, right? Mm -hmm. And if you see um, young men, when they talk about things, they talk about how to mod their computers and how to shag young women, right? Yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of, it's, 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 it's kind of, get yeah. yeah. It's kind of their fil filters, right? Yeah. Uh, and and strangely enough, their behavior kind of aligns with those sort of perceptual, conceptual filters. And mm -hmm. then when men grow older, eventually we begin to meet and talk about our diseases, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and I mean... And, and Hemorrhoids. Then yeah. <laughs> kind yeah. Of, you can actually understand 80% of what goes on in a typical male mind at all times mm -hmm. if you understand shagging and hemorrhoids. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. it's kind of, it, it covers most of it. <laughs> it's, it's precious little else going on in the you know, mail. If this hemorrhoid would stop bothering me, I would love to. You see the breasts on her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's your, how's your hemorrhoid doing? <laughs> Look, you know, you have about a seven second cycle yeah. there. <laughs> you know? And I mean, I mean, the, the, the shagging uh, explains uh, large BMWs or Rolls Royces or Bentleys mm -hmm. or whatever else kind of yep. kind of floats that particular shagging boat. Yep. Um, expensive apartments, expensive mm -hmm. apartments abroad, expensive apartments in sort of luxury resort villages. Two um, Expensive Armani suits mm -hmm. and, and um, all power symbols. Yeah. Power uh, professions. Um, I was going to say Harvard education, but there are some. Yeah, no, that, 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 <laughs> exceptions like to that. We, at the club, we used to call it, like, the sequence was like this for a pickup. Uh, you walk up, you let the other guys say their stuff, and then you drop the H-bomb. You know, we called yeah. it the H-bomb. And the rule was that you had to see how long you could go before you drop the H-bomb. And then when we got to medical school, you'd, like, you'd let everyone else talk their shit, and then you would throw the H-bomb in there, and then you, you'd be like, okay, all right, I fizzled a little bit. And then you'd be like, you know, I gotta go because I've got a five o'clock surgery scheduled. And then you leave. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you drop the egg bomb, you drop the doctor bomb, and, <laughs> and, and and you know, and then you wait, make merry. It's it's that's yeah. when I went into medicine. The thing that we knew the most was that as soon as you were no longer an intern, there were hot nurses aplenty. Yeah, and yeah. it's yeah. a it's it's a disgusting male centric way to look at the universe. But it, it was a large part of the driver. You yeah, know? <laughs> and I mean, also for this typical successful male, then he gets a younger female yeah. who he gets to impregnate and shag. And mm. the, the, the bonus package is that when he grows old and slightly decrepit, she can also double as a nurse and take care yes. of his hot hemorrhoids, right? So it's kind of, <laughs> what, I mean, what, so honestly, sex and hemorrhoids. There you go. What, what's not to like, right? You know, a kuna matata. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and for, uh, let's see if we can sort of, I mean, th this is dangerous territory because this is me just kind of trying to outline what, how it is for women and women's minds, right? Yeah. And uh, let's see. Uh, and if I will sort of mysteriously die after straight after the send, you will know that I sort of 
I, I was too <laughs> close to the mark. Yeah, right? I, I, I was. I, was I had to be put away. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, so the woman you. mind is kind of not shagging and hemorrhoids. It's the woman mind is projects. <laughs> it's organized. And it's and, so and also beautiful. projects are yeah. uh, um, measured, uh, reviewed in a very typical way. So so uh, we are kind of. Shagging and hemorrhoids is kind of we move closer to potential shagging, and we try to sort of avoid by by diet, by exercise and stuff the hemorrhoids, right? As long as mm -hmm. we can. So it's kind yeah. of moving towards and moving from, right? And it's kind yeah. of a very simple uh, vector analysis for men. For women, it's kind of a the project is uh, could be children, could mm -hmm. be the significant other, could be males in general, it other could be the world, it could be society, it could be yeah. uh, Anything, right? But it really doesn't matter for a woman what it is because it's the project. Mm -hmm. Now, collecting, and, scrapbooking, and yeah. and she doesn't provide sort of the 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 benefit to herself to just move towards good stuff in the project or bad stuff in the project. This is kind of for for you males who want sort of have relationships with women. Don't ever suggest that a woman should move closer to the desirable parts of the, the product and move further away and do less of the less desirable parts of the product. But that will ev never ever work because <laughs> they are not doing that particular calculus. So yeah. they just don't do that. But yeah. what they do instead is that they have a they assign for repeated good characteristics of select parts of the product they assign a hideously large positive number. Mm -hmm. And this is as far as I've come because you can actually not figure out what that number is. It's ridiculously large. So and, and this is kind of also purely subjective. So this can change at any moment's notice. But for large parts of undesirable and desirable parts, which then sort of gets thrown into kind of a big bucket, kind of the most parts of the of, of the product gets assigned a value of zero. Mm -hmm. Which means that it's it's she doesn't move towards doesn't move away, and this is kind of infuriates men to no end. And just stop being infuriated by this womanly behavior because that's just how they roll. Uh, they are just neutral to large parts of life, and for repeated obnoxious behavior, which in the woman's mind is basically male behavior, yeah. she, ass she assigns three uh, uh, ratings. And one is the minus one, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. and that is kind of the the, the first male offence, right? And yeah. then there's a minus thousand for the second offence. Mm -hmm. So there's no linear kind of relationship here, right? So first mm -hmm. minus one, then it's minus thousand. Now, to to give, give you kind of an, an idea of how you should never do a stupid thing to a woman twice, it, it it's kind of basically free to do a stupid thing to a woman once, right? But twice, no. Because if you do a good thing to a woman to earn back some respect, mm -hmm. anything you're, you're you do, if, if, you, if you hold up the door for her, yeah. it's worth one plus point. So then you're back at zero, right? So or negative 999. <laughs> typically, you are at any moment at zero, right? Yeah. So this is kind of, but this is not the bad thing. If you're at zero, you're basically doing a really good job of being a kind of male, husband, <laughs> significant other, work associate, partner, something, right? Yeah. But if you're at minus one, you're kind of on probation, and then you need to, and this is where you need to realize that holding up the door is worth plus one, and then you're mm -hmm. back to zero. Mm -hmm. Buying her a Rolls. Mm -hmm. It's also plus one, mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter in the slightest what you're doing is plus one. Yeah. But if you're doing something bad, first time minus one, second time minus a thousand. There's also a third offense, obviously, and then it's kind of minus a couple of gazillion, right? Mm -hmm. So basically, you're down in the pits, and yeah. you will need to negotiate uh, kind of a value neutral the zero space kind of elsewhere in the relationship right you mm -hmm. have to sort of rebond so to speak yeah. now uh, this is why do I say this because this is where uh, the semiosis is different I mean probably women are kind of superior creature than men possibly yeah. in terms of semiosis because they can sort of entertain these three 
slightly different ways of doing calculus. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they do add, add plus and minus. They do the, the, the logarithmic scale, and they also do kind of the, the Italian uh, restaurant math, which is kind of going directly to a couple of gazillion, right? Yeah. Uh, she has already identified in the significant other, in the project. I mean, if the project is a man, there is some kind of redeeming quality, something mm -hmm. that is worth an awful lot. Yeah. Uh, which means that as long as you have that, and as long as you don't move away too much from that, there's always going to be some redeeming quality, and she will keep you more or less as a pet or as kind of a nice object to have around and all that. Yeah. Right? yeah. I've got but, a sex metaphor for this. Yeah. Um, I was on a first date with um, my wife, and and I, you know we were talking, whatever, and and she said something, and uh, I'm trying to figure out the the correct phrasing. We were you know Long Island iced teas. We were we our first date was was at uh, uh, Jillian's, which is like a video game place, and she she said to me in passing, she said, uh, you know, a woman within the first couple of minutes decides whether or not she's going to let you screw at some point. It's just whether you screw it up along the way or not. And I was like. That's fascinating. I think I'm gonna marry her. <laughs> you know, she, she's like, yeah, yeah. You know, you 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 get disqualified pretty much. You open your mouth and it's like, yeah. You know, if it's yeah, this yeah, done for yeah. you. And then from I there, mean, you're. <laughs> I, I think part of this is, um, it's kind of a handshake, right? In between the 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 a, a spirit that chooses to incarnate as a woman understands that for cultural social reasons it's it's kind of a difficult task they need to be more shrewd right mm -hmm. men are tasked to basically kind of uh, as you said kind of can I shag it can I kill it can I eat it and things like that yeah. kind of move move towards what's desirable move away from what is undesirable kind of and yeah. then yeah so obviously uh, it's much simpler I mean but <laughs> there you go uh, That's so why we don't need a corpus callosum <laughs> <laughs> as much corpus callosum. Well, uh, should we run? No. Is it edible? <laughs> so, no. uh, the the societal trajectory mm -hmm. uh, have you could say that the progress of civilization proceeds in fits and starts, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, not wanting to sort of diss women now, but we 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 men are providing the starts and women are providing the fits, right? Mm -hmm. And both are needed. So if we would just sort of start a couple of gazillion projects, we would basically have gone extinct if there were to just be people of a male persuasion cognition, yeah. because we would sort of run around and doing really stupid things, and we would basically go to war too much, and basically so the, probably That's one of the reasons where we are now. In culture. This, this strange arithmetic of, of women, this strange calculus, is mm -hmm. because of children, right? So they have a different awareness genetically that mm -hmm. the body they inhabit is kind of meant to be a uh, crucible um, womb for another human being, right? And and yeah. probably that and changes the equation. Do think for the future. It, it's kind of a, yeah. For a so yeah, so yeah. Their, 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 their thinking about the future is probably. Slightly augmented and evolved. Sustainability, right? Yeah. yeah, and that's where corporations are now. Yeah, yeah. That's that's where we are now. We've we've done the scarcity. We've raped and pillaged, and we've gotten trophies and planted flags and anything that had a hole. Um, it's we're in a different time in society now. It's it's time yeah. for us to let the patriarchy go, and we want to protect this land. We want to protect these businesses. We we need to nurture that which we felt the need to conquer all the time. We're not in scarcity anymore. Ideas need to be creative. They need to be sustainable. Yeah. You know? I mean, you, we can actually see that institutions were kind of it's the thinking. Yeah. of the old uh, uh, male phallic thinking. You can actually see that a successful institution often ended up in a skyscraper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and big, it doesn't long, take hard, it, thick one pointing into the sky. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, it doesn't really get much more phallic than that, right? So... Uh, and the shift in the 21st century, which we kind of right in the middle of, mm -hmm. if you look at the words, if you see that the network is pretty much like a matrix, mm -hmm. if there is a kind of it's some integrated. kind of things happening in the network, it's a matrix. Right? Yeah. It's, 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 it's a web, if you will. And mm -hmm. if you look at the word matrix, and you, you, you 
put that right next to the word mater. Yeah. And you basically see that there's a shift from male to female, right? mm -hmm. from institutions to networks. Now, this obviously scares the bejeebus out of all the alpha males because mm -hmm. they got elevated right up there at the tip of the dick, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a, what has up until now been a premium has basically been to think with your dick. Or as mm -hmm. Henry Kissinger said, power is sexy. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is his actual words, right? So it's kind of, he, he at least was honest with himself. And the, the, the kind of another thing when he, uh, when someone asked him about women and, and homes and children and things like that, and they said, no, it doesn't, doesn't match, match I, I, uh, where, where, where the limousine stops, I now get off, and that's probably where my home is. Yeah. So, I mean, he, he doesn't give a fuck, right, about women, yeah. about homes, about houses, about drapes, about this, about that, right? Yeah, yeah, that time uh, is over. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, this is where, um, back to what we said about information and agency. Mm -hmm. uh, agency has still deep valences to do with the male type of, of agency, right, of uh, shagging, moving closer, or hemorrhoids moving away or hopefully avoid altogether, right? Mm -hmm. And this is where this can't be solved by information. I mean, obviously you can sort of ameliorate, right? You can sort of put on the hemorrhoids ointment, right? Yeah. <laughs> but what you truly need to do is to begin to act differently. Mm -hmm. You need to sort of move into a different type agency, and the agency that is more network centric. Mm -hmm. Now, this means that um, let's take a typical so male social media expert who is still trying to sort of to shout the loudest, right? He's trying to push or pull, which is move away from. You yeah, know, it's, it's, it's I mean, I mean, listen to me because. <laughs> I'm prefacing everything what I'm saying with my hugely prolonged dick, which yeah. is kind of, you can see that in all my, my posts and tweets and updates, and, and yeah. by the way, there's a big picture byline under every uh, one of my articles, so it kind of, you yeah. pretty much know that here I am, right? Yeah. And I'm ready, to, yeah. I'm ready to impregnate every medium with kind of a mutant <laughs> offspring. Yeah. Now, this means that these males are destined for the evolutionary scrap heap because mm -hmm. then they are congenitally blind for the actual information in the networks. Yeah. So the agency precedes the information but if the agency is not network information friendly mm -hmm. it's as if they basically just sort of stampede right through the network and they are basically just rummaging around in their own sort of private projections and maps and they are never kind of bothered by reality trying to tell them that well Evolve. You, you are missing out. Right? Yeah. Uh, and I mean I talked a year ago with a male social media expert very high paid guy uh, and he had sort of some very definite opinions about Google and then I asked him how many kind of Google followers he had and he said 23. And I basically said to him, well, there you go. That's kind of the one of the, the <laughs> reasons for why you are having difficulty finding out what Google Plus is because you are not here, right? Yeah. So he was kind of wanking around in his map rather than yeah. actually being in the network. Yeah. So uh, you could say it very, very simplified that the collaborative empiricism is when small groups of people, you, me, and some select premium clients, sit mm -hmm. down and we help them. Uh, we provide with options so, so they are not sort of fucking themselves up as much as they used to. Uh, and what type of sort of up fuckery is that? Well, mm -hmm. all of these things can sort of be corrupted, right? But what most clients would want to do is uh, find different ways of performing agency, different ways mm -hmm. of acting so they can access information, they can then create artifacts, they can be seen, be heard, uh, orient themselves, and 
when all of those things have sort of been tweaked, uh, evolved, uh, one of the deliverables is knowledge. Yep. Now, knowledge is one of those things that also is kind of in a male-dominated world and seen as something very abstract. But I have a very simple definition of knowledge. But basically, knowledge is what enables you to act intelligently. Yep. So, if people are acting intelligently, I can already infer, in, infer that they have knowledge. Yep. If they are showing a consistent track record of very, very intelligent action, and also they have a way of gathering actionable intelligence, they are basically present, kind yeah. of to simplify. Yeah. Uh, and they, there's an awareness element there. You, you, you know, what's yeah. right on Tuesday is not right. On Friday, as you said, you you know you, you you could burp with the fellas, but you don't want to burp at the tea party. Yeah, I mean, we could actually be kind of um, um, criticize ourselves a bit now, now, right? And see if we one of our earliest sins we would now probably see as a bit cringeworthy, right? But which one, the four-hour one? <laughs> yeah, and I, the, yeah. Uh, but the important thing here is that. If people would ever want to spend those kind of god awful many hours to actually watch these scents, they would see that there's a progression, there's an evolution. Yeah. We are learning by doing, right? We're learning yeah. by osmosis. We're learning by sort of throwing ourselves out right in the sea of information. And mm -hmm. the our agency co evolves with yeah. how we inform ourselves and how we are the intentions we have of informing others. I mean, this is kind of basically the, 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 the core point of why we're doing this, right? So there is actually a point. There's kind of same as every other kind of ha hangout, right? So whether you are watching people killing each other in, 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 in Syria or in the Ukraine or listening to us to kind of try to sort of lead a slightly more meaningful life, um, it's still information. It's it's yeah. that that part will not change. And the information, once you have front loaded information with agency, and you have front loaded agency with augmentation, with data, with your sense making, with your wayfinding, with your patterning, and originating in your middle model of 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 of, of semiosis or rather biosemiosis. I mean, ourselves, so to speak. Uh, then. It is not only information, but it's meaningful information. So it's these things fall down into very neat and, and, and simple explanations. So we can also obviously. Um, so I've had kind of in the back of my mind and see if I can sort of jot down some of those small, small select nuggets and insights and definitions here and there, because then we can sort of mine our own stuff. And obviously this goes for, for viewers and readers as well, and we can sort of take apart sort of select snippets and modules and turn them into premium content. Yep. So um, we skipped the part of epigenetics, I think. I mean, epigenetics is one of those sort of a bit contested areas still. I mean, you and I know what epigenetics <laughs> is. Uh, you can test uh, all they want. Yeah. <laughs> but um, let me see if you can sort of work around. Yeah. Um, if we have an action, mm -hmm. which is basically us uh, doing stuff in an environment and then we kind of learn by whatever worked and what didn't basically us sort of muddling through um, mm. if we combine that with uh, biosemiosis I mean mm. how our cells, how our liver, how our kidney, lungs, heart, brain stuff how they are talking with themselves mm -hmm. and hopefully once in a while, sort of guided by our minds and our body minds, uh, some sort of spiritual kind of uh, epiphanies now and then. Uh, if there is a sufficient resonance and alignment and attunement in between the biosemiosis and the inaction, that is pretty much close to epigenetics. Not, yeah. not. It's not a perfect definition, but it's it's close enough. Yeah, it's. And it's Choosing is what gets transcribed. You have you have yeah. the DNA of all your ancestors in there. Some of it is unnecessary, and it's sometimes yeah. as simple as reevaluating a situation so that you don't rage. Because if you're raging, you're you're pumping out cortisol. You 
the epigenetics is, and they'll give you all kind of different confusing um, meanings at different points, but it's it's doing the thing. It's having the right physical response, because when you have a physical response, it's a chemical process. Having the right emotional response, that's a chemical process. Yeah. Um, changing where you're sitting so that you're taking in different sun or different angles will, um, you know, if you're hot and you start to sweat, that's an epigenetic process. It's the things that are actually happening. Like you yeah. said, John. Not- actually, let's see if we can sort of take a leap here. Yeah. This might not be 100% true, but I mean, it's working towards it. So when you mentioned uh, the breeding thing, which mm-hmm. is probably the that best epigenetic way to, control. Yeah. Yeah, it's the start. So it's both epigenetics control, but it's also epigenetics augmentation. Yeah. So this means that when you breathe in, you're actually breathing in, you're sort of taking stuff in. Mm-hmm. You are uh, allowing what is sort of you could see from a physical point of view, kind of external oxygen molecules, right, to enter mm-hmm. your body. Yeah, and, and those hot hemoglobins, yeah, which are sort of, in your blood, yeah, <laughs> which go to your brain, to allow you to. Do and then you you you, yeah. you breathe out. You push off um, the CO two. Yeah, and yeah. from a metaphorical point of view, you just sort of you take stuff in, you become informed, and then mm-hmm. you kind of go out and breathe out and exhale mm-hmm. and and make it into the universe. Yeah. Now. Uh, the epigenetics, you could say that by uh, having a default sync, so there's that book again, Sync, mm-hmm. uh, which is on my short list, so, so this is kind of a marriage, kind of an additional send, I think, just that book. Uh, how to sync, such mm-hmm. a seemingly simple question, but holds such a pr- profound epiphanies. Now, uh, so by having a default um, chord, score, um, set of frequencies for how to breathe, mm-hmm. you you are master of your own destinies, so to speak. Yeah. You are in control of your uh, more or less kind of the, the, the intention of the epigenetics that goes on in your particular mm-hmm. body. But yeah. if you notice through yoga, through meditation, through basic, basic witnessing mindfulness, something, mm-hmm. just basic plain awareness, there's a uh, fraction of a second in between inhale and exhale and in between mm-hmm. exhale and inhale. So yeah. those two moments are when you can get to uh, augment mm-hmm. your own uh, epigenetics control. Yep, so as, as well as by stretching out the length of the cycle. Yeah. You, could, you could take a deep or slower breath. Yeah. You could take a full exhale, let everything out. And you could not judge what you exhaled and be like, oh, that's disgusting. My breath stinks. You know? yeah, Let yeah, it out yeah, yeah. and then take in another breath based off how you've adjusted the air around you. you know, you're part yeah. of the feedback loop. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Now, I, mean, I this is kind of yeah. in a couple of minutes, John. Um, yeah, I mean, this, this was covering, uh, I was very glad we could sort of tweak it into kind of epigenetics because this yeah. is where. Um, I, we could say a lot more, right? But I mean, you could also say that all of these, the the breeding, is affects uh, perception. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you are less stressed, you actually kind of can get out of the, the, the tunnel vision and and things yeah. like that. So it's kind of very kind of practical yeah. way. Uh, it also affects uh, agency. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm, I'm sort of not done with kind of to, to, to linking it back, but you could say that uh, you could actually pose it as questions. How could a client of ours learn how to breed in order to optimize agency? Yep. How could a client learn to breed slightly differently mm-hmm. to begin to see things differently and yep. so on and so forth? Yeah, to show the potency of the breathing, when someone comes in with hydrocephalus, like traumatic brain injury where the brain is full of um, that, that the intra um, brain pressure is too much, we basically have them breathe off like heavy breathing de- decreases intracellular interest like the pressure yeah. inside your head the, the breathing off that CO2. If that doesn't work, we can give you manos you know we can give you an uh, I am a manos of IV and that'll do it too. but if you're going through life every day and you just want to adjust things such that you're controlling, what happens next, 
you know, and you control your longevity, your resilience. Breathe. Breathe. Control yeah. your cycle length. Control your breathing frequency. Pay attention to your breathing. Um, in an extreme case, uh, the studies are finding that if you practice that um, that yoga style one nostril breathing and attending to which nostril you're breathing to through, you can lower your blood pressure. That's the cure for high blood pressure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but i got to run to the studio in about 30 seconds, John. <laughs> This has been, as always, uh, epic, and if people are accusing us for, for being kind of uh, arrogant bastards for actually calling our own missives epic, then... Then, uh, then, then they're in the wrong place. Because yeah, I mean... I mean got to be uh, Yeah, I mean, th 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 there's... Uh, but let me get back to you on that, on kind of the, the, the... There's some good thoughts brewing about kind of modules and, and, and premium uh, yep. sends and things like that. Absolutely. Again, big thanks for being uh, the fellow, fellow semi-naut you are. Yes, sir. And uh, talk soon. All right, John. Take care. Yeah. Pleasure yeah. as always. Bye-bye. Pleasure. Yeah.